Welcome back designers. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create a collage that appears to be a stack of Polaroid pictures, just like mine. For our collage, we're going to start off by taking five images off of pexels.com or a similar copyright free stock photo website. Then we're going to clip in each of those pictures inside of these Polaroid style frames. After that, we're going to export our final draft in an image format such as PNG so that we can share our Polaroid collage with the world. So if this is something you want to see, then just keep watching. To start our collage, we're going to click New File. Then we're going to select the Print Preset and we're going to select the Tabloid option. Tabloid is a large sheet of paper, basically like two sheets of normal letter size paper placed together. We're going to name our document Collage. And here you can select the different orientation options. So the first orientation means that the document is going to be vertical. The second orientation means that it's going to be horizontal. I'm going to select the second one because I'm creating a copy of my previous collage. Right over here where it says background contents, you can choose a different color for your background. I'm going to select custom and then I can pick a different color using my color picker panel. Don't worry, you can always change it later if you decide that you don't like that color anymore. I'm going to click create and that's what my document looks like so far. So the first thing that I need to do is actually start creating the overall Polaroid shape. To do so, I'm going to be using tool number 20 in my toolbar. If you guys long click or right click on tool number 20, you guys are going to see several different tools at your disposal. But for right now, I'm just going to select the rectangle tool. Up here in the fill area, I can select a different color for my rectangle. I'm just going to select black and I'm going to make sure it has a stroke of none. I want it to be, to be a perfect square, so I'm going to hold down shift while I drag to create my square. That looks perfect. This is going to be the frame where basically the image is going to go inside. I'm going to duplicate this exact same rectangle by holding down Command J or Control J on a PC. And you guys will see that it made a copy in my layers panel. In fact, let me put my layers panel up here to make it a little bit more visible. Anyway, it made the copy, but it's hidden. It's basically underneath. So I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to drag and I'm going to make this copy white. And then I might just move this one up so that you guys can see the frame, the black frame on the inside. Now Polaroid images used to be white on the outside. They had a white border similar to this and they used to have kind of like a long elongated bottom side. So I'm going to go back to that layer. I'm going to hold down shift just so that I can drag one side only and you guys will see how doing so will let me resize just the bottom and not the left, right, or top sides. I'm actually just going to go and make that slightly less dramatic. Adjust the sides little by little. I think that looks pretty good. So before I keep working on the Polaroid and making it look a little bit more three-dimensional, I'm actually going to double click to rename these shapes. So the black rectangle I'm going to call image area and then the white rectangle I'm going to call border. I'll show you later on why this is important. I actually want to go and group both of these objects together because I am going to apply each image one by one into the group and duplicate it. But before I do that, I want to add the, a slight drop shadow to the border to give it a little bit more three dimensionality. So I'm going to select the border layer. Again, that's a white rectangle. I'm going to go down to the bottom of my layers panel and I'm going to click FX and select the drop shadow effect. As I mentioned to you guys in class, with a drop shadow, you want to use the less is more philosophy. What that means is you don't want to overdo it and apply a big old thick shadow that looks like this because that looks really fake and it looks tacky. So yes, it's okay to apply a drop shadow, but again, less is more. It's like applying salt to your food. You want it just enough to taste, but not enough that it's like totally inedible. So you guys can see how I'm adjusting the sliders for size and distance and spread so that you can see just a little hint of a drop shadow. But again, it shouldn't distract from the overall object. You can also click right here in the dial 
to change the angle of the drop shadow. Right now I'm going to leave them all at an even 90 degrees. You can also, if you want to, double click on the drop shadow swatch and give it a different color. However, it doesn't really make sense to do something like a yellow shadow, right? So you do want to keep it pretty dark. I think what I'll actually do is sample the same color used in my background and then make it slightly darker, like so. So that my shadow is not black, but rather like a very dark teal. Gonna increase the size to blur it out just a little more, and then I'm gonna click OK. So now you can see it's a very subtle drop shadow. I think it looks pretty sophisticated. Next up, I am going to group both of these layers. So I'm gonna hold down Shift on my keyboard and click inside the image area layer and the border layer. I know they're both selected because as you can see, they're both highlighted in a light gray. I'm going to press Command G or Control G on a PC. And what that's going to do is it's going to group both of these together. So you guys will see now in your layers panel an item that says group one. When I expand that group, you guys are going to see that both of those layers are neatly contained inside of it. I'm going to call this group Polaroid one. And then I'm essentially going to go and hold down shift while I click inside of the group and drag it elsewhere. So if I hold down shift, I'll be able to select both of the items in that group. I want to be able to duplicate this same exact group five times. So I'm going to hit control J, control J on a PC, and that's going to create a copy. Now you might be like, well, Miss Abaya, I see the copy, but I don't actually I see the copy layer, but I don't actually see it on my canvas. So again, all you guys have to do is if you hold down shift and drag, you're going to see it eventually. You just have to like drag away from it. I'm going to call my copy Polaroid 2. Now, technically, you could make as many copies as you want to. I recommend using an odd number of objects. However, we're going to be using what's called the rule of odds, which means that you're using an odd number because the rule of odds just appeals to the human eyes. For some reason, we respond better to an odd number of objects or a not odd number in images than we do to an even number. So what I'm actually going to do is make five copies. So once again, I'm going to press Control J or Command J, depending on your operating system. I'm going to hold down Shift and drag with my Move tool so that I can actually see my copy. And then once I copy it over, I'm going to rename that group Polaroid 3. And I'm going to repeat those same exact steps until I have five duplicates. OK, so now if I look at my layers panel, you guys will see five duplicates of the Polaroid group. I want to be able to move each one and just slightly rotate them. So in other words, I don't want them to appear rigid. I want it to look like I dropped a bunch of photos basically on a tabletop and they landed whichever way. So one by one, I'm going to click on each group. I'm going to use my control T or command T so that I can rotate each of them very slightly. And I'm going to hold down shift while I move. And it's OK if some of these Polaroids go off of the canvas like this. So you can kind of see how some of the sides are getting cropped off. And that's OK because we want it to look like we sporadically dropped a bunch of photos on a table. So propping off some parts is fine. You don't need to worry. If you want them to all to fit perfectly, then that's fine too. So I'm selecting each group one by one. I'm using Command T or Control T on a PC so that I can go and just rotate them slightly, play around with the placement. We want to use our principle of variety, which basically states that not every single element in our design needs to look exactly the same. You are going to add variety by just changing the direction of these photos. For some of them, you may wish to rotate them entirely and have that thick white border showing on top, kind of like how I did here. And then for some of them, you may wish to do so a lot more subtle and just kind of rotate them very little. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. I purposefully wanted several of these Polaroids to go past the canvas 
If you don't like that effect where some of the corners are getting cropped, that's fine. You can just make the Polaroid groups a little bit smaller. But again, I actually like it, so I'm going to leave this arrangement. And now what I have to do is start placing each of the images inside of the Polaroid frames. So I'm going to do one frame at a time. And to do so, I'm going to collapse each of these groups by clicking on the arrow next to the Polaroid group name. And I'm basically just going to go and work on one at a time. So you can see that Polaroid one is selected because there's this like blue bounding box around it. I'm actually going to go expand it and inside of Polaroid one, I'm going to click the, the uh, layer that says image area. This is really important that you guys select that layer so that when we transfer our images over, they go in perfectly. I'll show you what I mean momentarily. So I'm going to open my first image using Command O or Control O on a PC. So I'm going to check in my downloads folder and I had this image of paint because you guys know I love to paint. I'm an art teacher, right? There's several ways that I could go and move the image over. The easiest might be for me to just split my document into two screens so I can view both images simultaneously. I'm going to click window at the top. I'm going to select arrange and I'm going to select the option that says tile vertically. And then again, my layer that says image area should be selected so that using my move tool, tool number one, I'm going to click inside of this image of paint and drag it. I no longer need this image because it was just moved. So I'm going to X out of it. And now I can just go and adjust it. And now you might be like, well, Miss Abaya, it's basically going and covering several of the frames that you just made, but that's fine. I can use Command T or Control T on a PC to resize it. And then just drag it slightly over that Polaroid. Maybe I can go and rotate it as well. So it goes with like the actual angle that I had rotated the Polaroid frame. And similar to a technique we had already practiced in class, I'm going to hit return or enter on your keyboard so that I can just save my changes. I'm going to right click on that image of paint and I'm going to select the option that says create clipping mask. And you guys will see that now that image is placed beautifully inside of the Polaroid frame. Now, if I wanted to spend a little bit more time adjusting the image, I could go, always go and drag it. So you can see how I'm dragging it on top of the frame. So you can actually see the actual paint inside of the cups instead of just the brushes. So you can always go and move the image around um, to fit your needs. So I am actually done with Polaroid 1. I don't want to move it anymore. So to make my life easier, I'm going to collapse Polaroid 1 by clicking on the little arrow next to the name. And you guys will see a little icon right over here that looks like a lock. So I'm going to select Polaroid 1 and I'm going to put a lock next to it. And so now I'm unable to move that. Even if I want to, I can't move it until I unlock it. And this is going to make it so much easier for you guys because you're not going to move stuff around willy nilly. Next up, I'm going to place an image inside Polaroid 2. So I'm going to expand the group called Polaroid 2. And just like I did before, I'm going to click inside of the layer that I called image area. Then I'm going to hit Command O, Control O on a PC and place my second image. So for my second image, I think I want to place this image of a dog. Because if you guys know already, I have a beautiful black Labrador. And even though it's not this beautiful dog right here, it can still, you know, stand in for her. As I did before, I'm going to split my screen by going to Window, Arrange, and Tile Vertically. Then I'm going to use my Move tool to click on the image of the dog and drag. Because I already moved the image over, I don't need this one anymore. So I'm going to X out and I'm going to basically repeat all the same steps where I resize the image. Maybe I rotate it and then I create a clipping mask by right clicking on the image layer. Select create clipping mask and it's placed beautifully inside of the frame. How amazing does that look so far? I don't want to be able to move this accidentally anymore. So I'm going to collapse Polaroid 2, select it and click the little lock icon so I don't move that by mistake. Next up, 
I'm going to go to Polaroid 3. And from here on out, it just gets extremely repetitive because I'm going to follow the exact same steps where I open an image, drag it over, and then use the Create Clipping Mask technique so I can place the image in, and then I lock it. All right, let's take a look at our work so far. So doesn't that look amazing? It look, totally looks like a stack of real Polaroid images. So if you need to adjust anything from here, like if you're like, mm, I don't like the way I rotated that, maybe I want to go and place this particular Polaroid group somewhere else, that's fine. You just have to go and unlock it. So I decided the one with the dog just needs to be a little bit straighter. So if I'm not mistaken, that was Polaroid image number two. So I have to unlock it. So I have to physically click that little lock icon right over here to actually be able to edit that group with the group. And remember, if you guys wanted to go and drag something elsewhere, you have to hold down shift so that you can drag the entire group and not one layer at a time. So again, if you change your mind and you're like thinking, well, you know, I don't like the way I rotated it. That's cool. Click the little lock icon and then you guys will be able to make changes. So I totally encourage you guys to go back and edit according to your own personal needs. So in other words, don't copy me. Do it your own way. All right, you guys. So I am pretty happy with the way that this looks and I think I'm ready to add some final touches. So, first things first, I was looking at the teal color in my background, and although I like the teal color, I kind of want to match it a little bit more to one of the other colors being used in the image. So, I can just go and click in that background layer, and if you guys dislike the color, all you guys have to do is unlock that layer, and then you can go to the edit menu at the top of your workspace, you can click fill, you can select um, color under your contents and you guys are going to see the color picker once more. Instead of selecting a random color here from the color picker, what I actually want to do is drag my mouse over the image and you guys will see that when I do so, it kind of goes and samples the same colors being used in the image. So what I actually wanted was to go and mimic the same blue of the sky and see how that would look. So I can click OK and you guys are going to see those changes are now reflected. So I am ready to share this design with the world. So to share it, I need to make sure that I export my final draft in a raster format that is going to work on any website or any social media platform. I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'm going to select Export As. Either one of these options would be fine for any website or social media platform, PNG, JPEG, or GIF. Eventually, we will be learning the difference between each of these formats. I want to select the highest quality format, which is PNG, which is going to result in my file size being slightly larger but again, I'm more interested in quality here. So I'm going to select PNG. I'm not going to mess around with the dimensions for now. I'm just going to click export. I'm going to call this one final Polaroid collage. And you guys are going to select your destination as your desktop or better yet, your flash drive. For now, I'm going to select my desktop and I'm going to click save. And that, my friends, is my finished Polaroid collage. I hope you guys enjoyed making it with me. I really can't wait to see your final designs and learning a little bit more about you through your selection of images for your favorite things. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions and peace out.